I don't even know how much of the colors are even coming through on video, but it looks like it is an absolutely gorgeous sunrise. The springs are happy after all of this rain. They're all flowing. So based on that sign back there, I am thinking that the real danger must be the burned trees that could fall and that is why AWOL says there is no camping along this stretch, but I did see the bear symbol, which means there's bear activity here, and there was a note in Far Out saying that some campers had been attacked by a bear. So it's probably a little of both. Regardless, I was okay at the campsite I stayed at last night. I went to bed early, but I woke up at around midnight and struggled to get back to sleep. I went to bed hot, and when I woke up in the middle of the night, it was cold, but my quilt kept me warm as long as it was on me. I woke up, I set my alarm for five because Rabbit is going to be waiting there for me at 1 and I just wanted to get everything done and make sure I was out of there by 7. I think I was actually out of there by 6.30, I'm not sure, but I just want to give myself plenty of time to get there. I don't want her to have to wait and if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. So, uh, it looks like what looked like dark clouds this morning have gone away. And I see the sun and what looks to be maybe some blue sky might be a little hazy. But as I mentioned last night, I've got 11.6 to make it down there. That will probably take me about six hours. And I think it, it is mostly downhill. I'm very much looking forward to Rabbit. It was unexpected to receive her text last night inviting me to stay. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing her. Didn't ask her how her foot was. But I am looking forward to talking to her about that when I see her. And I'm hoping and praying that her foot is better. And that we will be able to hike together. Also, I heard from Sweet Potato. She was done with trail days and was asking where I was on the trail. If I take a zero at Rabbits, that might mean that she might be able to catch up with us. I'm breaking webs today, web blazing. If she catches up, we'll just have to see what happens. I would really like for her to meet Rabbit and for Rabbit to meet her. We're all similar ages and I know Sweet Potato is wanting to meet people, especially women her age. So we'll just have to see what happens. I guess since I'm starting to go uphill amongst all the rocks and burn stuff, I'm going to close this morning report out. This is Rebound signing out.
Hello. I have a lot of time to think out here and be alone with my thoughts. A lot of people listen to audiobooks or music, but I like to be alone with my thoughts and hear the birds. It helps me work things through, I guess. And I have been thinking about how I have said several times that I smell like a bag lady. That is in no way throwing shade on the homeless. If anything, being on a through hike will make you feel at one with the homeless because essentially we are homeless and it will at least give you a very little taste of what it's like to be homeless. Uh, I think we have it far better out here because we get to go into town and clean up from time to time. And we get to get food in town from time to time. We don't have to scrounge for what we eat. And we have a little more privacy out here. We are essentially in survival mode out here. If you're not careful, you can become very self-focused and self-centered and I constantly have to keep tabs on that because when you're in survival mode the most important things to you are food, water, and shelter. Those are the three basic things you need to stay alive and so those are my three main focus uh, when it's raining, I need to find shelter, even if it's just my tent. You gotta have food and water to live. So, there was someone who made a comment a while back about how there are ways that hikers can stay clean on the trail. I really haven't met one yet. We all stink. We all have dirty legs and dirty hands. Uh, you might say, why don't you just go bathe in a creek or a river? It's cold. It's too cold. Even if it is deep enough to immerse yourself. Uh, I suppose you could get a cloth and wipe yourself off, but even then, you got to have some amount of privacy to do it. I'll never forget, I think it was on my last through hike attempt, I was at a shelter, but I was down where the camping spots were flat and there was a creek that flowed by the shelter and by the tent sites. Well, I look upstream while I'm gathering water and there are two girls, buck naked, in about two or three inches of water. Totally naked. Everyone at the shelter could see them. I could see them. And they are bathing in the water source. Hikers don't take kindly to that sort of thing. So, after a while, it sort of becomes futile to try to stay clean. Every day, I get mud on my legs. I try to wipe my face off. And there's dirt on it that I cannot see. I have a limited amount of wet wipes. As I mentioned, I'm experimenting with the scrubs, but they leave so many suds on my body. I don't want to get those suds on my tent because I don't know how my tent is going to react to those suds. So I've just been washing my feet, which still smell like something dead. And then I let the suds dry on my feet on top of my socks. My feet are on top of my socks to keep them off of the tent floor. And I do feel, feel a residue. If I try to use it on other parts of my body, it was irritating my skin. I suppose I could get a wet cloth and wipe the suds off. And that is a very real possibility. But not until it's the dead of summer when it's hot. In the, uh, it, it's still cool to put a wet cloth on your body. 
So I do the minimum that I can with those wet wipes. But at times I still smell like I am not taking care of myself and or I can't take care of myself or I don't have the means to take care of myself and I thank God that I get to go into town periodically and that's something that the homeless can't do. I know some of them try to bathe in sinks but in public restrooms but still and I can relate to that too. There have been times where there has been a public restroom right on trail. I can think of one that goes through, I think it's Penmar Park. And I just washed my face and my arms and it felt so good to have that water on my face and have running water that was not as cold as ice. It must have been in the summer. Yeah, Pennsylvania, it was in the summer. So... I think there was something else I wanted to say, but it has slipped my mind right now. So for now, this is Rebound, signing out. That's bear poop. There are all sorts of seeds in it. Sometimes it looks like a big plop. Not well formed like this. All of the bear poop I've ever seen is black and it usually has some kind of seeds in it because bears love berries. But I think they are omnivores, meaning they will eat critters if they want at least the black bears and the brown bears I know the grizzlies will eat meat but I just thought that was kind of interesting I am making very good time I did leave early but um, the trail has been fairly gentle there were a few climbs in the beginning I think that from here on out I will mostly be going downhill and I'm eagerly looking forward to my shower. can see through these trees there are some spectacular views in these trees through these trees and if you look right there that's the James River here's a better view of the James River and all of those beautiful mountains behind it Unfortunately, I am going to have to get my feet wet. Rats.
I think I'm gonna cross right here, but I'm gonna have to put my phone away. I made it across. It was only about shin deep, and now my feet and my socks are wet. It will probably take a couple of days for my shoes to completely dry if I don't have to go through rain. The trail goes right by the shelter, which according to AWOL's guide is closed. And I think they said because the wildfire, but it's still in that bear zone. Bound here. I did about 11.6 to the St. James Bridge, and there Rabbit was waiting for me. She took me by stand animals to pick up my box, and then she took me to Walmart, and then we went home. She has been so kind and so gracious, and her house is just like staying at a and b I feel like I've died and gone to heaven. Um, it's been nice to reconnect with her and her husband. Her, because I we met, Bud and I met her and her husband at the lodge at Amicalola. And then Rabbit and I started at different places. She started at the foot of the falls and I started at Springer Mountain. And then we met back up at a shelter on the second or third day and just sort of hit it off and started hiking together and then she had to get off trail for her knee issue and she was having a foot issue at that time and she has been trying to get her foot healed and now she is she had to get back off she had been hiking south trying to make up some miles for her flip-flop hike until I got to the point at which she had done just before Waynesboro. hope that makes sense. So anyway, then she is now having foot problems again. So we don't know if she is going to be able to get back on trail or not, and so that is why it was important to me when she offered to come pick me up and take me to her house to get to spend some time with her. So I am going to take a zero tomorrow and spend some time here with her and also get some rest and we'll just see how things go with her foot and I'm hoping and praying that she'll be able to get back on the trail. So I'm pretty tired right now. I haven't done much of anything except enjoy Rabbit's company and so I guess I'm going to go to bed, and for now, this is Rebound, signing out. Mm -hmm.